Hi, my name is Bob Grunier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Now, back in 2017, when I acquired this sample, with a view to at some point doing some linear experiments with it, should it be uh, active, and bearing in mind that uh, I was told that where uh, this particular beach was, it was quite an energetic place. I also felt a little bit energised when I went there and swam, and um, the, the sand, I was told, from some of the locals was quite special. So... Um, we shall find out if it is. Uh, I got it. I had no means of detecting whether it was special in any way. But since then, this product was released, and I happened to get a copy, uh, uh, one of it. And it's the Radioscan 701, and it has this wonderful pancake detector here. And this is um, able to detect. Uh, you can do a control by having that over the front uh, for beta and you can do alpha with it off and you can do gamma with this side which is a lead sheet so you can uh, discriminate for gamma anyway um uh, i've used this in a number of experiments and then later this product was released called the radia code 101 and uh, I've used this um, in a number of experiments as well, and it hopefully will feature in many more experiments. Anyway, these two uh, products are produced uh, by a company in Moscow. Unfortunately, people can't get hold of them right now. But anyway, uh, it occurred to me um, when I found that a sample the other day that, oh, I, I probably had a means now to uh, detect whether there was anything interesting coming of it, whether there was any truth to the fact that that sand, which I'd obviously identified was heavy just from holding it in my hand, but until just now, I didn't know whether it was any good. Um, I, you know, I um, had a means to test it. So... Um, at the moment, you can see the kind of background in here is uh, 21, 22, uh, sorry, 0.2 uh, rather microsieverts per hour. And I'm going to turn on the uh, detection, the speaker rather here. Uh, how do we do this? Let me go here and go like that, maybe. There we go. That's so doing the detection there. And this actually gives them as a spectrum. And I'm going to turn on the um, speaker on this one as well. And I'm going to, okay, so you can see it's going bleep bleep there. Okay. And you can actually put this in a kind of search mode as well. And you can actually go in here and it'll actually do alpha, beta, gamma as well. So if, when it's in this mode. So I'm going to choose that mode. Okay, and we go back out. So at the moment, uh, they're both showing microsieverts per hour. So I thought, excellent. Um, let's see if uh, this stuff has any activity. And uh, this is what <laughs> happened late last night. Um, <clears throat> can I put it on the table and watch? So that's the alarm going off, and we are getting nearly one microsievert per hour. So that's kind of at least five, 1.1 there, five and a half times the amount detected by this scintillator in this radio code. Okay. Now, the monazite down in Kerala uh, is noted to be one of the largest deposits of thorium in the world and actually long before i went to live in kerala in 2008 i first went there in 2001 i um found out that uh, the fishermen there were living under the highest background radiation of any uh, group of people on earth and there was some studies done you can research and find them as I did in the early 2000s and those studies showed that they didn't have any extra incidents of 
cancers than sort of populations that lived in lower radiation areas. And these people are literally on these fishermen beach. I mean, the, the exact place where I found this sand, and I got this sand, this beach that I was noted, uh, uh, that I was told of many, many years ago. Um, uh, I've actually witnessed the fishermen pulling in fish from their uh, coastal nets on this exact beach. So, you know, whatever's coming out of here is able to come through this plastic. And interestingly, even though it's been in here since 2017, it hasn't damaged <laughs> the plastic. It's very, very much fully intact. Okay, so that just gives you the kind of potential energy or disruptive nature of the strange radiation that came out of Suhas Railcar's uh, fuel. Okay, so what does it do to our searching, which does our alpha, beta, gamma? That's that one. Sorry, it has a problem with that. Let's have a look at this. Well, this pancake is even more sensitive. So the purpose of this pancake really here is to, um, yeah. So we can get them both going here. Now, actually, by putting the lead on, we can uh, see how much how much of this is gamma. So here we go. I'm going to put the lead on. So a fair proportion of it uh, appears to be gamma. And I imagine if we didn't have this thick plastic in the way, that the output from this in terms of uh, beta particles would be even part higher. So I'm going to actually change the mode here so that it is uh, giving us beta particles. And that means I need to take off the lead shield here. And we'll go and we will do a measuring here. So it's a hundred and fifty, hundred and forty. I'll move this one out of the way because it's uh, throwing its warning off. It's average, so it will be annoying for a little while. So you're getting about 145, 146 here, plus or minus 15%, that's its accuracy. And that actually gets higher, uh, more accurate uh, the longer the sample time. But already you know it's a, a fair chunk there of beta. Okay, and I'm going to cancel that, and I'm going to take it out of the way, and I'm going to start a uh, new sampling here. Oh, I've moved the sample next to the uh, <laughs> scintillator. Okay, and turn the uh, alarm off on that on the speaker. Okay, ah, peace. Right, so here you can see that uh, the background here is around, it's dropping, it's dropping, it's dropping. 14, okay, so it's 150. So it's, in terms of beta, it's 100 times, uh, sorry, it's uh, 10 times more at least than the sort of normal beta emissions there. 
And uh, now the alpha shouldn't really get through that, but we'll have a look. We'll, we'll switch to uh, turn that off. Anyway, this is all very rough. And we'll switch this to alpha. Uh, Okay. It helps if I actually press it. So, all right, remove the cover. And we'll see if it, we're getting any alpha through there. Start measuring. Okay, so bring it over. Leave it there, count for about a minute so that we get some sort of um, idea within a minute average. So this is again through the plastic. So the plastic will be started stopping a lot of alpha particles. Okay, so it's getting quite accurate here, plus or minus 9% on 270. So if I stop that, okay, move that over there, and we will start another sampling here. So because there's not many counts, it's going to take a long time for this error. It's almost saying there's almost a 100% error at the moment. So it'd need a long sample because there just isn't that many alpha particles around. And we can already see that it's... Okay, so it's getting better now. It's halved the error there. So... Okay. Anyway, it's definitely about one-tenth of the amount uh, from the background, and I would expect it's probably even less than that. 
Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll stop that and we'll take off the lid from this here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, there's our sand in there. Actually, that's a little less than full. And of course, it is sand, so the packing density will be a lot lower than the water. But anyway, we will bring this over and we'll put it on to uh, do a measuring. And we'll bring it down and we'll see what we get. see how much of that alpha is stopped by just that thin plastic. So it was about 25 before. So this is 20 plus times the background. See how much quicker the uh, uncertainty drops. Wow, over 600 there. Okay, we will do the same for uh, beta particles because they obviously get stopped as well. So I will. That's all that, and I'll switch to uh, beta, and I'll switch back, and I will go and we'll measure the beta. Now, when you're looking at this with the eyes, you can't see that kind of a strobing effect. It's uh, because of the way the OLED screen works on the Regiscan. Anyway, you can see that that is quite a bit of a beta. So it's not that much of a difference compared to the alpha. So it does point to the fact that the beta is relatively high energy so we're going to take that off i'm going to turn this off for now and i'm going to bring our spectrometer back and because uh, there will be some shielding going on uh, because of the plastic before and uh, we will turn back on the speaker and we will bring it up to it and see what we get
Okay, so it's a not much different in that case. So it's the alpha shows a large difference when you have any sort of thing in the way, and that's unsurprising. But some of the alpha is big enough to go through that plastic. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off. And there we go. So what we can do is we can use the... Um, the radio scan here, oh, sorry, radio code, uh, to give us a spectrum. And so I'll leave this sampling overnight and we'll find out what this has got in here. I suspect since this uh, uh, monazite has a vast amount of thorium in it, apparently, enough to run, uh, I think, India's power just, just in that little region for 300 years if they used thorium-based uh, nuclear reactors all of India's needs, the possible, quite possibly the largest populated country on Earth, um, you know, uh, it'd be interesting. So I s expect to see some thorium in there, and uh, I will publish that uh, graph. But here we can see some accumulation, but I will start the accumulation again. Anyway, so, uh, and I will also uh, do some uh, beta analysis. Anyway, so one thing that we could do is uh, do what Parkamov did, uh, which... Uh, I, I kind of suggested, uh, or we discussed it in early 2020, and he went ahead and did some experiments, and that is uh, with uh, tungsten filament uh, halogen bulbs, and you expose one to the other if there's strange radiation coming out of here. But I believe that um, it's going to have a lot of work. This is a little bit of a complicated experiment, and, and uh, uh, I think uh, Alexander Parkmob is doing a fantastic job with that. However, we can do things that he's not able to do, and one of them would be to mix this uh, material in here. And I suspect that if we get this under an SEM, there'll be particles in here that are basically sand, and they may well be just the um, the lighter coloured particles. And uh, we can assess that. And the darker particles might be um, uh, the, the, he the heavier component of this. And therefore... What I might do is uh, have this in some sort of um, water and agitate it and maybe even sort of spin it around and see if we can separate out uh, the heavier component in here. And then run it in a, a, a supernova experiment as some of the series of experiments there. And then we can basically see, you know, if there's a major change in the energy output from this uh, after it's been run in a supernova experiment and if we can extract some of that material to see if there's been any major changes in elements in that supernova reactor because there is a speculation uh, that was made by Matsumoto that ball lightning would be able to remediate nuclear waste and uh, thorium and probably some of the products in here are some things that you might find in a nuclear reactor uh, certainly one that's thor thorium based and so this would be one way to do it but also if we persist in having no one give us permission to test the tritium uh, which we now know would be a absolute slam dunk to uh, show the uh, process that we are proposing for remediating the uh, tritium water at fukushima uh, we can uh, at least try to replicate your Brown's experiments with radioactive material. We know that this is safe for humans to handle. You can go to this beach and you can get buckets full of it. So this would be easy material to source for me and for anyone that would wish to replicate this. It's already in a semi-powderized form. And like I say, you might want to separate out the quartz component, but maybe you might not want to separate it out because we've discussed how quartz might play an important role. And there probably is potassium in here because it's got salty water on there. So that all those things are expected. But we might want to add some iron and aluminium uh, powders to this and do what um, Yul Brown did and see if we can reduce the radioactivity of uh, this material using HHO or Brown's gas. And if I can't go to the States and I can't go to the uh, uh, to do experiments with 
a Mars gas in Japan, then I will work with Slobodan in Switzerland uh, to conduct uh, these tests. And we don't need to have anyone's permission because we have this, and we have this, and we have this, and we have this. You just don't need to ask anyone's permission. And this is sand that for millions of years humans have been exposed to, and uh, they are perfectly healthy, and therefore this is just black sand. And uh, there's nothing that you have to... Uh, films to fill in or anything and if we can show that we can remediate this we can uh, almost certainly say that we can remediate the heavier components of the nuclear waste at Fukushima and uh, we can do some quantitative and qualitative analysis on that. So um, I, I will do another video where I will talk about uh, how I came to think that this material would be important and relate it to radiation intensities and so forth and I'll put that in a blog but that's it for now. This is the Keralan uh, monazite derived heavy sand and it uh, I believe will give us the ability to uh, test some of these technologies and have quantitative and qualitative data and the material is essentially uh, free as far as uh, radioactive material goes and uh, um, it, it would be relatively predictable in terms of uh, what it contains. So thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.